We're seeing a significant increase in adolescent addiction with the prescription drugs, uh, particularly the prescription opiates, uh, Vicodin, Oxycontin. Many times they start off with the prescription opiates and then transition to heroin. We're seeing an increase in the potent forms of, of uh, marijuana, cannabis dependence, and uh, designer drugs, including uh, bath salts and uh, other uh, potent uh, uh, drugs that are uh, part of the youth drug culture. Also, the earlier onset of the heavy drug involvement creates substantial increasing problems. The youngest narcotic addict we've treated is uh, around 12 or 13. The ones that I'm thinking of get started with prescription opiates, particularly uh, where they might have pain, they go into the doc doctor, get a prescription opiate, and then become dependent. Very often it will be up to eight, uh, 17, but they finally get into treatment, although they might have overdoses at 13, 14, and 15. The evidence is that with adolescents you need a different type of treatment uh, because of the dysregulation of the, the brain and the fact that they very often don't have the necessary coping skills. So in terms of residential, the, the best time period is about 90 days for the stabilization of the brain, but then you need continuum of care. So the best models are a residential phase followed by an outpatient phase followed by a reentry phase many times a recovery school the reentry phase uh, with adolescents is crucial they go back to school where young people are using the drugs uh, they don't yet have a sober peer group and so it's crucial that they develop a sober peer group so that they can socialize uh, you know listen to music with sober companions uh, go to sporting events with sober companions, learn, how, learn that they can have fun and have friends without using. In terms of our training at UCSF with the psychiatric residents, the most important thing is diagnosis in evaluation of substance abusing young people, particularly the dual diagnosis. Traditional psychiatry has not done well in terms of the diagnosis and treatment of addiction. In addiction medicine, we focus on it as a primary disease in and of itself. And the important aspect is to be able to assess the role of addiction in what we call psychiatric comorbidity. In other words, if a young person comes in for depression, what is the role of substance abuse in that depression? In addiction medicine, interfacing with psychiatry, we do a great deal more drug testing. And many times in traditional psychiatry, they don't urine test to determine whether the history is accurate or not. So, uh, and this is a particular problem as you move up the socioeconomic ladder. The biggest increases in addiction amongst young people are in middle and upper class uh, people and there's this belief that addiction only occurs in lower socioeconomic populations. So we have a rotation for the child and adolescent psychiatry at UCSF through the treatment program so they get exposure to the uh, community-based treatment programs where Many of the uh, opportunities for psychiatry exist in this world of medicalization. Diagnosis of dual diagnosis patients is complicated because the early onset addiction can dysregulate the brain and produce psychiatric symptoms that may be secondary to the substance abuse. So with a substance abusing adolescent, it's important that you detoxify and remove the influence of the drug on the brain and to determine what psychiatric condition exists separate from the, from the substance abuse. Uh, one of the, the best indicators is did that psychiatric disorder exist prior to the onset of addiction, like depression, uh, attention deficit disorder, psychosis. 
And in family history, for example, there's evidence that there's a genetic predisposition, not just to addiction, but also to uh, uh, mental illness like depression in women. So with early onset addiction, it's a much more complicated differential diagnosis. You also have the process addictions, which is food addiction, sex addiction, that is what we call in addiction medicine, the pathological pursuit of reward. Therefore, uh, assessment and case formulation is crucial in the teaching of, of psychiatric residents. In addiction medicine, we put great emphasis on smoking cessation since the leading cause of death of recovering alcoholics and addicts is smoking-related illness. It is a difficult implementation in um, addiction treatment because many of the programs are resistant to smoking cessation, particularly if you work with a population that comes out of the criminal justice system as I do, where they're diverted from the criminal justice system, where cigarettes are the medium of exchange but we are putting greater and greater emphasis on uh, smoking cessation, education, using some of the pharmacotherapies that are available for smoking cessation because you have a much better health outcome if you include smoking cessation in your total paradigm of recovery. Detoxification alone is not comprehensive treatment. It's the starting point. You have to, with addiction, first you get sick spiritually, then psychologically, then physically. Recovery is physical, psychological, and, and uh, spiritual. The initial phase is detoxification, but detox alone is not adequate treatment. There has to be a, a, a follow-up, uh, or there's high relapse after detox alone. We in addiction medicine are very supportive of Obamacare, healthcare reform, and parity. It allows access to uh, medical care for uh, the entire population. It eliminates pre-existing conditions, and one of the primary pre-existing conditions has been substance abuse and mental illness. So the population that we served has been screened out of the medical system, and therefore, it's one of the reasons that we do not have physicians that adequately diagnose and treat. And then there's parity, which is a, a, the addiction benefit has to be a mainstream benefit. It is not an optional thing. Therefore, we believe that there will be better diagnosis and treatment. And all the evidence is that early intervention with the treatment of addiction uh, decreases uh, uh, total health care costs. So we're uh, very supportive of it.